No doubt you've worked with intervals in the past, so this won't necessarily be anything new to you, but we want to make sure we clearly define what we mean when we're talking about intervals in the real numbers. Here are the main eight cases you would probably be dealing with in a real analysis course. You'll see this first one, parenthesis A, comma B parenthesis. This is an interval from A to B. The parentheses mean A and B are not included, and this just describes all the numbers in between A and B. That's what an interval is. It's a range or a set of numbers from one to another. And if you've never seen this notation before, these curly brackets, this is set notation, or you might call it set builder notation. The way we read this is the interval A to B is the same thing as the set of all real numbers, all real numbers X, such that, or given, that's what this vertical bar means, X lives between A and B, or X is greater than A, but less than B. Notice the strict inequality signs. The strict inequality signs, those make the parentheses. And this is what we call an open interval. You might call this open since we're using parentheses and not brackets. Like in this next example, you'll see it's exactly the same idea, but there's a bracket around A and there's an or equal to next to A. This means we are including A, we're including that endpoint in the interval. And while only half of this interval is open, so we might call this a half open, half open interval, if you like. The third one here is exactly the same idea, but with B. Here we're including B, we're including that rightmost endpoint. So both of these, both of these are half open. Well, this last one here, you'll see they're both bracketed. A and B are both bracketed. Those are both less than or equal to symbols. We're gonna call this closed. This is when we're making an interval with both endpoints included. These last four are a similar idea, but what you'll notice is they are unbounded. These are unbounded, or you might call them infinite, infinite intervals. And that's just because one end goes to infinity. You see here we have the interval a to infinity. Essentially, we're starting at a, not including a because of the parentheses, and then we just go forever. So this is, this is a very big interval here. The next one, exactly the same. It's just we're including that endpoint a, and these last two, same exact idea, but we're just making the interval the other way down to negative infinity. Now that you know all about intervals, click the link on the screen to watch the next video in the Real Analysis course.